Okay, um, if you just watched it, we just figured out how to make this whole thing happen, right? We have a curve uh, given as y equals f of x, and we created the um, osculating circle, the unit tangent vector, um, and also a plot of curvature, uh, kind of like over time, or really as a function of the x-coordinate of the point A. Um, so things are more interesting if we have parametrically defined curves. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of recreate this whole thing, but I'm gonna recreate it so that we can use parametrics um, so that we can look at uh, just more interesting curves. So uh, what I'll do, I'm gonna do the whole thing over again. Uh, I'm gonna click on GeoGebra Classic again. That's probably gonna tell me that it found stuff. I'm gonna say delete, because I don't want it to, uh, I don't I honestly, uh, I've only recently started getting that. I don't exactly know what it means and I've never once hit recover. So I'm not sure what it would even do. All right, so same deal. Uh, this time what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say like f of x is gonna be the x coordinate and g of x will be the y coordinate of my parametrics or component functions. Uh, so f of x is gonna be, I don't know. And, and the beauty of this is you can just like change them up, right? So I'm gonna say 2x, g of x, let's say is, uh, two cosine of three X. I don't really wanna see these. What I want to see is the curve that I get if I combine them, right? So I'm gonna use curve and I'm gonna say F of T, G of T, and let's let T go from zero to two pi. And we get this. Uh, again, I don't wanna see labels. I'm not a big fan of seeing the labels on things which uh, there's no good reason for that. I mean, the labels are actually useful, especially when you're starting to build more complicated things to like know like you wanna put a point on A. It's nice to know if this is labeled as A, uh, but this won't be that complicated, so I'm okay with it. I'm gonna do the unit tangent vector thing again. So uh, it's a vector, A of, uh, I'm gonna say V, right? And then GeoGebra is gonna create a uh, slider for us, A of V. And then uh, that's the initial point of my vector. The terminal point, I want to have like its x coordinate be the x coordinate of a of v, and then plus uh, the x coordinate of the unit tangent vector. So the way I accomplish that is I always do a of v and then comma a of v plus a unit vector. And the unit vector is gonna be of a prime of v. So I use this trick a lot to get a unit vector uh, to be in a location that I want it to be in. I'm gonna press enter. Um, and there you can see, I guess that's where we are when V is equal to one. So a couple things I wanna change. Uh, I don't wanna see the label for this. So let's not show the label. Uh, if you wanna change the color of this, there's like a couple options. One is you can just do it straight up in settings. If you have it selected and then you press uh, this, you can actually change the color here. Like I'm, I'm gonna make it blue. Um, for no particular reason, but it does change the color over here, which is helpful when you're trying to decide like what to work on. So that's kind of a nice little thing. I'm gonna change my slider so that it also goes zero to two pi because that's what the curve is defined for. Um, press enter and you can watch it move. It'd be nice if I saw the point, right? So I'm just gonna make a point at A of V and we can see as I was doing that, my slider hit the end and started going backwards. I don't want that. So settings and slider instead of oscillating, we want, so I have to say oscillating and osculating in this video and every once in a while, uh, you know, your brain just wants to mess that up. So uh, increasing. All right, and again, I don't really want the label here, so I'm gonna turn the label off. That's, uh, there's no reason to do that. Okay, so we're pretty good so far. Now what I want is the osculating circle. So uh, GeoGebra can still auto-generate it for these. So uh, let's let's use that ability. Uh, every once in a while, it says that the, the circle is undefined at places where I think it maybe shouldn't be saying that, but uh, it's hard to complain with the amount of effort that it's putting in. So I'm gonna do osculating. I'm just gonna go for it. Osculating circle. Did I type that right? Yeah. Template would have gone away if I had typed it wrong. Uh, I need to give it a point, so that's point A, and I need to give it uh, the object that A is on. So uh, that's the curve A. So capital A, lowercase a, we got that. Okay, so it gives it to us like this. Uh, you know what might be useful? Let's let's see if we can change K 
Can we change it so that it's in a different form? Uh, let's try algebra equation. Ah, let's do this. Let's write it that way. Okay, so I did settings and then I chose algebra and I changed the equation from like general to standard form, which is really nice because I can see R squared. Um, and let's do this. So it's going really fast around this thing. So let's slow it down. Uh, and you get the same things, right? So sharp turn is going to give you a small circle, which means the curvature is large. Um, basically, no turn means that you're going to get an enormous circle, which means the curvature must be really small. Like curvature is a measure of how curvy something is. So it's not curvy at all. It has very small curvature. Um, when it's linear, it actually has no curvature. Uh, okay, so we're getting uh, some neat things. Uh, we do, I think, want to look at a graph of the curvature. So I'm going to use, because I have parametrics, uh, I'm going to use a different formula for curvature this time. But before I do that, I'm going to put in graphics 2, which is where I want this curvature to live. So this I can kind of make smaller. Um, this is actually a really interesting point at like... Uh, well, it's zero, it's, it won't even let me go to zero. Oh, it does. Okay, so the circle like disappears, but just slightly more than zero, you get this nice circle that like looks like it's just a part of the graph. Okay, back to graphics two, where I want to graph the um, curvature, right? So I'm going to let GeoGebra name it. I have parametrics. So, and the X component is called F, and the Y component is called G. So what I'm going to do is uh, a fraction. I'm gonna do the absolute value of, so it's gonna be f prime of x, g double prime of x, minus g prime of x, f double prime of x. So it's the absolute value of that. And then over, let me scroll up a little bit, over, uh, what am I doing here? Quantity, uh, f prime of x, and you can see it's starting to show up on both screens. But if I did it right, it will only be on graphics two when I'm done. If I didn't do it right, I will go into settings and change that. So f, f prime squared plus g prime of x squared. So if you're not familiar with this form of the curvature formula, uh, I mean, just search the internet for it and it will definitely show you. I have a video where I run through like how to derive each of the formulas. So this uh, I need to raise to the three halves. And this should give me the curvature. I'm gonna press enter. So you can see, like looking at it, there are some spots where curvature is big. I see nothing. It takes a little while to calculate. Uh, I know it like calculates it as it goes, but then when you press enter, it like disappears and shows up again. Uh, I don't know, computers are weird. So I don't really wanna see this. Don't show the label. And then I can actually only make my slider go zero to two pi. So I don't really need to see all of what I'm seeing right now. Uh, so I get this, this looks pretty good. And I would like to put a point on this that will always have the same uh, t, like so this this is t, this axis right here is like time or whatever. Um, so I want a point that uh, follows, like gives you the curvature at whatever, whatever, oh man, I'm screwing this up. All right, so this is controlled by my slider, right? So v is 0.1. Okay, so I want a point over here that uses v as the x coordinate and curvature as the y coordinate. That was really hard to uh, get my head around. So I'm clicking here so that it shows up there. And I'm gonna do uh, an ordered pair of v comma h of v. So much easier to do than it was to say. You can see it's on graphic one and two right now. Press enter, it should be on only two. And it is. And it's named b, which, you know, that's fine. I'm gonna show the label. Uh, I'm gonna hide the label rather. And Let's turn this on. Okay. So it seems that the osculating circle will disappear graphically anytime the curve like self intersects, which I don't exactly know why it's doing that. It doesn't, it doesn't really seem like it should. I don't, I don't know exactly what formula it's using to, to get the osculating circle. Um, but now we can watch and see what's happening. And, you know, like, so when it's turning relatively quickly, the curvature is bigger. When it's not turning, curvature is smaller. 
going very quickly, curvature you know gets big pretty fast, and then it's gonna go back down. We're gonna get some zero curvature, which means it goes linear for a second, right, through the origin, um, which if you found uh, some tangent lines, you would see is actually happening. Uh, but anyway, this is like a pretty good picture. What's nice about this is we can uh, change it up. So I'm gonna pause my slider and make it, uh, I'm gonna make it the unit circle, except I'm gonna make it have a radius of three. Three cosine of x, and I wanna do three sine of x. What am I doing? Three sine of, I've messed this up. Okay, three sine of x, enter. There, and you can see this has a constant curvature of, so the, and you can't see the circle either, right? The oscillating circle, because the oscillating circle is the circle. It has a, so this circle that we went with, right, is a circle of radius three, which means that the curvature is one third everywhere. And you can see down here in this ordered pair, it's always one third, uh, which is kind of neat. So if we change it, let's change it to a, uh, well, this will be a new lib, so it has a, Curvature that varies, but like not a lot. Um, but I'm gonna make this four. So there's a circle with a radius of four, which means that the curvature is always one fourth, uh, which is kind of a neat thing to see. And you can just play around, change it to whatever functions you want. I just wanted to show you that we can also do this kind of thing with parametrics. You can also zoom, uh, all kinds of stuff. All right, so I hope this was helpful in some ways and uh, good luck.